Hi everyone. If I were to create a list of stocks that I can buy every single month for the next 12 months, the three stocks I'm going to talk about in this video are going to be in that list. It does not mean that you need to buy those stocks. My only intention is to present you the analysis and the parameters that I'm going to use so that you can create your own stock list for monthly buys. Throughout this video, every 30 seconds, I'm going to teach you something new. So humble request, please watch this video without skipping. The first stock in my list is largest bank in India, which is State Bank of India. Now you will have a counter argument immediately that Rahul, when everybody is talking about HDFC Bank, ICSA Bank, Axis Bank, private banks, why are you talking about State Bank of India? There are three main reasons that everybody is potentially missing out that I want to present to you and you can decide after listening to these three main arguments. Argument number one is non-performing assets, also called NPA. In cases of banks, this is one of the most critical factor that we need to look at while selecting banking stocks. What it simply means is that if a bank is lending 100 rupees, for example, to its customers, how much of that 100 rupees it is able to recover back? Right. So let us say if a bank is not able to recover back two rupees out of 100 rupees, that means the bad debt is 2% also called NPA. Very simply, I have tried to explain to you. Now, if we look at the data in the last four years, have a look at my screen here. You will see that I have compared the top five banks in India and you will see that SBI in 2019 had a bad debt of 65,000 crores. It has come down to 21,000 crores, a massive 67% reduction. If you look at HDFC, for them, it has in fact gone up from 3,200,000 to 4,300 crores. They have, they have made it worse by 35%. ICICA has also improved massively 61%. Again, ICICA is a quality stock, no denying. But there is a reason that why I have not selected ICICA bank. I will explain to you in a few minutes. But if you look at these five banks, you can see that from a bad debt perspective, SBI has made massive improvements. They have cleaned up their loan book. What it tells me is that the quality of the loan book is right now better when it comes to SBI and their practices of lending has improved in the last four years, making it one of the finest banks in India. While improving NPA is a very, very great sign, it also comes with a side effect. Typically when banks NPA improves, there is always a danger that their net profit margins start to fall because they're very cautious in who do they actually lend the money, their quality check improve right but if you look at the data you will see that if we compare the top five banks once again and look at their net profit margins you will see that in the last four years SBI profits were moved from 800 crores to 50,000 crore rupees that is like 5,000 percentage improvement in their net profit margin. If you look at other banks, they also have improved, but I can clearly see a big improvement in the net profit margin in the last four years. What it is telling me is the combination of NPA improvement and also the net profit margin makes SBI the finest bank right now from a quality of the bank's perspective. So the factor number two is the net profit margin improvement that SBI has done in the last four years is totally amazing. That is why this stock deserves to be included in my list. The third reason of me picking SBI over other banks is it is undervalued, massively undervalued. Have a look at my screen and look at the PE ratios right now. Also look at the PE minus the sector PE. You will see that likes of HDFC is overvalued from a PE perspective. Look at ICICI Bank overvalued. But right now, State Bank of India's PE is less than the sector PE. From that perspective, it makes sense. Also, if you look at the PE ratio in silos from SBI perspective, you will see that traditionally the PE ratio of SBI Bank, if you look at the median or last five years, it is roughly 12.8. Right now, it is hovering at around 10, which makes it really, really good buy for the next few months. And these are the three main reasons that I think SBI is a better bank, quality bank right now as compared to other banks. No doubt HDFC Bank, ICICI Banks are also quality stocks. But if I were to pick one of those, I will pick SBI. So far, if you're liking this video, hit the like button and follow me for upcoming videos. Stock number two is from consumer staple sector and the stock is ITC. I've covered ITC in my previous video in great detail. So I'm not going to repeat all of that here, but I'll summarize three important points that all of us need to know. Point number one that makes ITC a really, really good future stock is because of their margin improvements in their FMCG business. Have a look at this. You will see that their FMCG margin have gone up from 8.1% to 13.3% 
in a matter of three years. This is a massive improvement. This tells me that they are likely to compete with likes of HUL, Nestle and other FMCG businesses that makes them a really, really good stock. Point number two is their hotel business. If you look at this data, you will see that in the last one year, they have doubled their revenues when it comes to hotel business. And also from a profit perspective, they were 183 crores down as a loss. But now they have made a profit of 542 crores, which is again a massive, massive improvement from where they were just last one year ago. So ITC is a quality stock from a hotel business perspective as well. And thirdly, from a cigarette business perspective, as I consider ITC predominantly right now as a cigarette business, you will see that the revenue growth has been 20% um, again, again, which is a good growth. And secondly, their profit margins in cigarette business has sustained to 20% roughly illicit trade on cigarette is coming down because of government interventions because of which ITC is going to enjoy further growth in cigarette business. Because of these three factors, ITC makes a all-rounded stock. If I take the cricket analogy, they are going to be a very good batsman, bowler and a fielder as well. And from a PE perspective, if you look at the data, you will see that the right now the PE ratio is around 28. So it has gone back to its pre-COVID levels, which makes it a fair value to buy. So far, if you're liking this video, hit the like button and follow me for upcoming videos. Let us now move to stock number three which is from the sector that I have been working for 16 plus years. So I know a little bit about this sector. The sector is IT and the company name is TCS. Now, when in the last two years, every IT stock has been beaten up badly because of IT meltdown, TCS has kept some sanity. If you look at the vitals of TCS, have a look at the comparison of the top five IT companies in India and you will see that if you compare the net profit margins in the last five years, TCS is number one. If you look at the net profit margin alone last year, you will see still TCS is the number one. If you look at the earning per share growth, TCS ranks number one. If you look at the one year historical EPS growth, TCS stands number one. If you look at the return on equity in the last five years, TCS is number one. If you look at the valuation side of it, where every other company has been beaten up badly, TCS is still the company that is ahead of the sector. The only counter argument people have around IT stocks is that what is the future of IT stocks given the progress in the space of generative AI? Please let me tell you that IT sector is going to do much better in the coming years because who is going to implement generative AI? It is going to be Indian IT companies only, right? Also, before a company can take the journey of generative AI, they have to implement cloud solutions. And again, who is going to implement cloud solutions? It is going to be Indian IT companies. If you look at one of the study done by Accenture, only 30% of the biggest companies globally has now adopted cloud. There are 70% more companies to go. Again, there's a bright future when it comes to IT stock. So TCS is going to be my pick in the IT sector. The last very important point that I want to make is that if I were to invest 10,000 rupees every month, the way I would look to allocate that 10,000 rupees is that 50% of that will go into the banking sector. 30% will go into the consumer staple sector and remaining 20% will go into IT stocks. I personally believe that this combination is going to give me the maximum returns with the least possible risk. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments the stocks that you would recommend to buy every single month. Also, let me know if you hold any of these three stocks. Lastly, let me know in the comments if you would like me to shoot videos on specific topics. I would read all your comments and try to come up with the videos that have the most comments. With that, I hope to see you in my next video. Keep rocking.